right, this is the Committee of the Whole. This is Thursday, February 18, 2016. We're at 6 p.m. Uh, Council Kaboom. Here. Yeah. Uh, Council Del Shola. Here. Uh, Council De Plopurium. Yeah. Here. Uh, Council De Piro. Here. Uh, Council Hill. I got Council Bang. Here. I got Council McLaughlin. Here. I have Council McKinnon. Here. I have Council Napolitan. Here. And I have Council Sumner. Here. Uh, yeah. Here. Here. Yeah. 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 All right, the first piece of business, the only piece of business, this is a resolution up by Council Frank Capone that the city services and city engineer provide information regarding flooding concerns on Cottage Street, behind Park Plaza, in the Culvert area on Spring Street. In addition, it is requested that all other known areas of frequent flooding throughout the city be identified and that information as to what steps have been taken or will be taken to address these issues be provided. Councilor Capone. Please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I think uh, Mr. O'Rourke was going to grab a jacket, so he should be up here momentarily. We have uh, Mr. O'Donnell in the audience. Uh, do you want to just wait until Who would we be looking for? Mr. O'Rourke? Oh, okay. oh yeah. yeah, I saw Should we just, yeah, yeah, I know he went to go grab it. I think he went to grab a jacket. Okay. okay. Um, yes. Uh, yeah. Well, you can start with, 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 okay. with anything uh, if you want us okay. to open. What we're here for, okay. you know. Okay. Uh, we could have uh, Mr. O'Donnell come forward okay. if, if, if. Motion made, second. Please, Mr. McDonald, will you come forward? Good evening. Please state your name. Uh, and Kevin O'Donnell, Chief of Staff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No. Uh, thank you very much for being mm -hmm. here. I know that uh, Bill's on his way up. Uh, the issue that, that we hear, I don't want to go too far because I want to, oh, look at this, good timing. Yes. The man of the hour. <laughs> Please have Mr. O'Rourke. Second. <laughs> Motion made and second to have Mr. O'Rourke appear. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Please come forward. Please state your oh, name sorry. and title. Bill O'Rourke, Director of Engineering. Apologize for being late, everybody. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I was bending his ear in the back room, that's why he's late, so it's my fault. Uh, thank you very much, uh, gentlemen, for being here. Uh, you may recall this piece was put on uh, last session, but due to scheduling issues, uh, I, I unfortunately and some others weren't able to make it, so we put it in again this year. Uh, the concern is something that's been raised to my attention by many constituents in different areas. We're just trying to get proactive, and I'm, I'm sure this is stuff that, that the administration's thought of, that you've seen across the city as well. Uh, there are two main areas of concern that I have. I know we've talked about Waters Ave at one of our prior meetings. I think we've, unless anyone else has any questions about that, I think we've addressed that pretty thoroughly. I don't think there's any need to spend time on that, unless anyone else wants to hear that you've been very thorough with the information there. I was concerned about other areas, uh, more particularly uh, Spring Street, the culvert down there. I know that's not a new problem. That's been going on forever. I know that that's very complicated because there are multiple parties involved. Uh, I, the handout that you provided uh, to the members uh, was full of information about some of the issues that are going on. It talks about the number of folks that are impacted by that, 1,200 residences, several hundred businesses. Uh, it's, a, it's a huge problem, huge issue. And because there's so many players involved, I don't know the dynamics of what's going on with that. So that's one thing I'd like you to address if you could. Uh, I know that there was a piece on the calendar looking for additional funds to get us through the um, engineering. I think it was like a, a million to get there. And I think the whole cost of the project is probably 10, somewhere in that ballpark. And I'd like to know our other, I know that the city's been willing to do its part. I don't know if other factions have been willing to do theirs. How much of that share is the city's versus other folks? And then the other one that I have a concern about is um, Cottage Street. Uh, behind the Park Plaza area from green down uh, towards the end. That always seems to pool up uh, with significant water. I've got photos here from 2010, 2015. The water gets up to the curb level. It's pretty high. Uh, it does get into the Park Plaza building 
It affects their electrical room, uh, parking, that kind of stuff. Um, the, that one as well is not a new issue. I know my colleagues from Ward 1 uh, will, will tell you that. I've got a letter from a property management company from 2001. There's a letter from, from our mayor going to a constituent back in 2011 talking about getting an engineer down there to take a look. So that's been an ongoing issue too. So if you could please address what if, if there are other areas in the city that we're aware of that we have flooding issues, what the causes are if we know them, and what if anything we can do as a city to be proactive to kind of get these things resolved. And that's the whole purpose of the piece. So I, right. I would appreciate anything that you could shed light on that for me. Uh, so <clears throat> let's start with uh, the main drainage basin we're talking about, which encompasses the Cottage Street flooding issue and the Spring Street flooding issue. Um, the outfall of this drainage basin is at the Market Street culvert. The Market Street culvert is tidally influenced by the Mystic River. Um, at high tide, uh, water runs backwards through that culvert, comes into the long channel along the railroad tracks at Boston Market Terminal, and uh, fills the drainage system, fills our piping system. Um, so much so that on a beautiful sunny day at an extreme high tide, you'll see flooding on Spring Street. That happens because the tide gates that we have in our drainage system, in our piping system, are not functioning properly. They are decades old, and I have a picture of them. Uh, they're approximately six feet by six feet wooden structures on hinges uh, that, that flap shut um, when, when, when it's not raining. So they're shut when it's not raining, but they're, they're worn out in the fact that the, the seal between the wood and the concrete is worn out. So when you get high tides on a beautiful spring day, water will seep by that tide gate and flood the system. And that's the water we're seeing on Spring Street. So on a beautiful summer day, we have to close Spring Street. And it's frustrating. Um, what I'm working with with a consulting engineer is a concept for replacement of the Market Street culvert. This concept will eliminate the tidal um, fluctuations in that drainage basin. We have a preliminary proposal to develop a pump station located at the inlet to the Market Street culvert on city property. That pump station will operate when it rains. Water will come down the drainage system, enter the long channel, and at the end of the long channel will be the entrance to the pump station. The discharge pipe will be installed through the Market Street culvert and will fill the annular space around that force main. So what that effectively does, it, it takes the tidal activity out of the basin. So whenever it does rain, we will have a gravity system and the discharge will be a free-flowing discharge into that long channel. And it will run to the pump station and we'll simply pump out the water to island end. That I believe will eliminate the flooding situation on Spring Street as well as Cottage Street. Five years ago, the city made the effort to put additional catch basins uh, in Cottage Street at the low point where we're experiencing flooding. Um, we can put as many catch basins as we want in that low point. They won't do any good because at a high tide, the entire, I'd say, and I haven't observed it yet, but I'd, I surmise that half the drainage system is filled with tidal water. When you have half your system filled with tidal water and you have a rainstorm and the water has to go somewhere, it doesn't go anywhere fast. Um, that's why we're experiencing, that's why I believe we're experiencing excessive puddling on that low point on Cottage Street. Um, it doesn't happen very often. 
Uh, I was lucky to witness it on September 30th when we had four inches of rainfall um, in a four hour period. We, have, we had excessive rains that day, flooding in a number of areas in the city. And uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get there to, to witness this myself. Um, but I'm trying to find the time uh, to get to some of these flooding areas to witness them myself because in my experience, um, that can el eliminate models. It can eliminate expensive consulting engineers. If we have an experienced person that can get to a site, pop manholes, and actually physically see and understand what's happening in these drainage systems, we can pinpoint the location and, um, and, 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 and make a fix perhaps fixing a capacity issue or, or, or whatever it might be. But I believe um, that uh, the Market Street culvert, tidal activity, is the reason we have flooding not only on Spring Street but also on Cottage Street. Um, another area that we have flooding that I actually did witness, I was called to the site on September 30th, uh, was the police station parking lot and the rec center parking lot, one and the same. Uh, they had 18 in inches perhaps 24 inches of storm water in that location. And again, uh, that drainage basin discharges uh, at the Chelsea line, and that pipe runs for about 1,500 feet to the Mill Creek along Revere Beach Parkway. Uh, again, Mill Creek is tidal. So when we're having flooding, it's very possible and I haven't witnessed it, but I suspect that the tidal activity is getting into that uh, piping system and not allowing water to drain out of it, out of it freely. Um, in the past, I've seen some reports from consulting engineers saying that we have a couple of 90 degree bends in, in our piping system. When you have a 90 degree bend and you're asking a full pipe of flow, to turn around a 90 degree bend, that's a significant loss that limits the capacity of the drainage system. That's part of the problem of our police station and recreational area. Um, I have also been told that when that discharge pipe gets into Chelsea, Chelsea has a number of pipes that protrude through our discharge pipe. I don't know what they are. They could be gas lines. They could be water lines. They could be sewer laterals. But when you have, I believe it's a 24-inch pipe, and you have sewer laterals going through that 24-inch pipe, that significantly uh, impedes the capacity of that pipe. That's another part of the problem that we have. Um, what I'd like to do, and I'm putting this uh, in my plan, and it's probably a three- to five-year plan for here in the city, I would like to purchase uh, a camera truck, I'd like to pur pur purchase a, a vector truck, and I'd like to have a dedicated stormwater crew that can operate these pieces of equipment and go out there when we have a problem and investigate these problems and get back to us and we'll have an answer immediately on how we need to proceed. Um, uh, Councilor, you mentioned that we spoke enough about um, Parkside Apartments, um, Elton, and Tremont. Um, we have covered that, but I'd like to share with you what I learned the other day. Uh, Monday, we had a holiday. It snowed two inches, and we all woke up Tuesday morning to go to work. Um, we almost slipped coming out of our doors because of the spike in temperature. That spike in temperature forced all of that water to run off and create flooding situations. A snow melt created flooding situations here in the city. I went down to um, uh, Elton and Tremont. I witnessed no flooding. However, I witnessed flooding on Air Force Road. Um, we had spoke of um, we had spoke of um, uh, a short circuit pipe that transfers the stormwater from that intersection of Elton and Tremont up to the North Creek. So the South Creek, where it's supposed to discharge, that pipe is deteriorated and, and no longer existing. So the city many years ago put in a short circuit pipe that runs all that drainage water up to the North Creek. I went along that 
drain line, I pop manholes, and I witness something that I didn't like at all. Uh, adjacent to the tennis courts on Tremont Street, I saw a manhole that was surcharged. When I say surcharged, I don't mean the water was coming out of the frame and cover. It wasn't coming to the surface, but the level of water was only 12 inches down. Uh, the pipe is well below that, but the pipe is five feet down, and I witnessed water high in the manhole. I go to the next stream, downstream, I go to the next manhole, I pop that manhole, and I see the discharge pipe from that surcharge manhole only a quarter barrel full. It was a 12 inch pipe, a quarter barrel full. If that system had been operating properly, that pipe I should have witnessed being three quarters to full, relieving that whole drainage system much more efficiently than it was. Just from popping those two manholes, I'm led to believe that we have a problem in that drain pipe. What could it be? It could be a, a partial collapse. It could be something simple as a, 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 a Coke bottles and maybe a, a, a large milk container or something. Something's preventing the flow from getting through that pipe. Uh, I want to investigate that. I want to put a camera up that pipe. I want to locate the problem if there is one. And I want to relieve the blockage or perform a spot repair if necessary. I want that pipe operating as efficiently as possible because that will minimize flooding at the intersection. That's something I would like to ha be able to do in-house with our, with our stormwater crew and our camera and our vector. We, with all those pieces in place, we'd be able to solve that problem in two to three hours. Right now, I have to hire an outside contractor to come in two to three thousand dollars to camera that pipe. I'll have to wait a week or two to their schedule allows it. Um, and then if we have to do a spot repair, I have to get three bids um, from three contractors and schedule that. And maybe this spot repair might get done six weeks from the day I discovered the problem. I'd like to have that capability in-house and take care of that problem in 48 hours. That's where I'd like to go and I need all your support to handle some of these issues. Um, so that covers uh, the issues at Cottage Street. I talked about the police station and rec center and certainly Spring Street and the Market Street culvert. Um, any other Same questions? Uh, Councilor Capone still has the floor. You've only asked questions about two minutes. I mean, I know it's been a long time. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman. So um, thank you very much for that overview. And, and to the best of your knowledge, those are really the areas that we're looking at. Those are the main Those points. are ones that I'm aware of. I only, I've okay. only been in the city for about seven months now. I'm sure there are others. Okay. But these are the areas that have really reared their heads and uh, brought their attention to myself. Okay, great. I don't know if you can speak to this. If you can, fantastic. If you can't, mm -hmm. don't. With regards to uh, Spring Street, uh, the whole project is, is the entire project 10 or that's the city's share of the project? Sure. <clears throat> um, there has been debate about who's responsible for the Market Street culvert, um, whether it's our responsibility or whether it's others' responsibility and whether Chelsea should be involved uh, in a portion of the cost. We haven't figured all that out yet. Okay. All right. What I have, what I'm trying to figure out is the is the full cost. In order to build a pump station and in order to put that force main in the Market Street culvert and to fill the annular space, and to take the tidal activity out of the equation, um, the financing uh, is something separate that we have to continue to work work through. Um, we believe um, the cost of the replacement is between 10 and 15 million dollars. Um, we have a proposal in front of us now for $90,000 in which a consultant will perform a full survey, a geotechnical analysis along the entire stretch to find out where we have contaminated soils because the contaminated soil aspect of the project is the main uh, cost in the 10 to 15 million dollars the soil the contaminated soil is the main cost so let's take a look at the soil along the entire stretch see what we're getting into and so we can better define 
the 10 to $15 million project. Maybe it might move down to seven to eight to nine, but if we had a better handle on the cost, then we have a better sense of what we need to fund. And we have a better sense of what we can go to uh, other stakeholders, such as at Chelsea, such as the Boston Market Terminal, and uh, perhaps others if they're involved. Okay. Uh, and, and I don't know if you know this or not, but the 1,200 residences and those several hundred businesses that are impacted, are those exclusively Everett, or we, we have folks that are in Chelsea and other areas that are involved as well? I believe it's uh, exclusively Everett, okay. the drainage basin <laughs> above, the drainage basin above um, Spring Street, um, above the tracks, above that long channel is entirely Everett. Uh, Chelsea does have a 36 inch force main that, uh, that pumps into the Market Street culvert they've ex expressed their interest to remove that 36 inch discharge and take that elsewhere, um, which would effectively and potentially eliminate their stake uh, in financing. One last question, okay, if I may. Thank, right. thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, with regards to Cottage Street, you, you've stated that you believe that in large part, some of that concern is because of what's going on down at Spring Street in that culvert area. Uh, I know that in the past, we, I don't know if anything's been done on Cottage to look at that. Is it, is it possible that we have undersized pipes being fed there as well, or? Uh, certainly that's part of it. When I, when I first looked at it, initially my thought is a capacity issue, undersized pipes. Um, but the discharge uh, of Cottage Street is right through Spring Street. And we know on a clear summer day at a high tide, that system is full. So if it's not a clear summer day and it's raining and it's high tide, water has nowhere to go. And unfortunately on Cottage Street, this is a low point of the city. We are an 80% impervious community. The water has nowhere else to go but to a low point and to sit until it can drain away. And unfortunately, that's when it puddles high, that when it's over, over tops uh, curb lines and over tops driveway aprons and potentially impacts private property. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank okay. you everybody um, for the indulgence. Thank you. Just to let you know, there's five names in the queue and we will start with Councilor Napolitano. <coughs> thank you. All right, a lot of my questions were asked here. I represented that area for 15 years. And, mm -hmm. You know, I live in the area. Um, I live on Cottage Street, so we've. This is a this is an old dance, but I, I appreciate the information. You provide a lot of information. <laughs> and you've answered a number of my questions. Um, how much of a priority? And I guess this is more toward the chief of staff. How much of a priority is this? Is the administration making to get this problem resolved? Uh, yes, we've been addressing this. Uh, pretty much on a regular basis since uh, the, the chief engineer came aboard and we, we've, we've had actually have had meetings uh, with, with the outside contractors with Chel representatives from the city of Chelsea and we've been um, adamant on, on addressing this issue particularly with the engineer and, and discussing all of our options and what what would best fit the city and you know while being conscious of the uh, financial impact it would have as well. Well, I know the financial impact is something that has stalled this years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, very focused, the city got very focused on trying to find somebody else to pay the bill. The problem has just gotten worse. You know? And uh, you know, it's only a matter of time before the water down there creates structural damage to the buildings that are affected. Uh, the residents of Cottage Street, like I said, I've lived on that street 58 years, and the flooding's been going on a long time. Um, you know, so I, I, um, you know, I, I would really like to see it resolved. And, and, and um, this has been great information, but this is all also for some of us old and has not been addressed. And I'm glad to see, it. that's why I wanna know where we stand as far as a priority of this. Because we just can't keep ignoring it. No, we would all like to see it resolved, Council, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Um, who controls the floodgates down there? Is it an automated system or is that yeah, it's automated, it's, oper it's gravity will control it. <clears throat> so you've got two six by six um, flapping valves. Mm -hmm. um, when, when the water wants to 
go out, the valves will get be pushed open by the stormwater, and when it's done um, raining, those uh, flapper valves are supposed to sit back on their seat. Um, they're very old, in my experience. These uh, hinge systems uh, rust out, they rot, and uh, they don't function properly. Uh, I've only popped the manholes and looked in and have taken pictures of these six by six um, wooden flap gates. Um, I certainly didn't get in and, and try to operate them myself. Who's responsible for maintaining them? We are. Okay. Do you feel that that <clears throat> has deteriorated be, probably because of a lack of, and I don't mean recent, I mean over years, over the last couple of decades. It just hasn't been maintained uh, properly? My experience, Councilor, I think it's a poor design. Okay. You're looking at wood seating on concrete. Um, a head of pressure will push water by that, by that seal. Mm -hmm. it's, not a, it's not gasketed. And perhaps there was a gasket at one time, but it's been decades. Right. I don't know how many, perhaps 50 years, 60 years. I, I, don't, I don't know. But rubber deteriorates if they, in fact, had, did, had, had installed a rubber gasket. But I imagine it's all leaking by. And only because it hasn't been mentioned, you might want to note also that when this flooding occurs, it usually also impacts Lower Winter Street as well, on the other side of the building where, uh, what's the name of the restaurant? Uh, Rita's, thank you. Mm -hmm. Right on Rita's. Uh, sure. You know, and and we've and that's something else that uh, some of us have been addressing over the years from complaints from the residents down there. So it, it's probably part of the same. You know, the feeling is it's part of the same issue. If it's imp if the culvert is impacting Cottage Street, Winter Street is a lot closer. It just runs parallel to Spring. Sure. Right. So. Yep. Um, all right. Well, I again, I, I you know, I'm very anxious to see this issue addressed. It's, it's an old topic for a lot of us, and at, at some point it gets to a point where even our constituents no longer buy our explanations, and we have no control. Sure. So I'm glad to mm -hmm. hear that this is being taken care of. A little surprised by the amount of cost, but I think that's, uh, and I know it was significantly less 10 years ago, but it still has to be addressed. And like any problem, you let it fester, it becomes, cost that much more. Mm -hmm. A good example is your example of, of the uh, wall at Washington. Right. At Washington Street. Uh, Washington Ave, rather. Um, all right, that's all I have for questions, but thank you. Sure. Calvin McKinney. Through you, Mr. Chairman, to the director. Um, Mr. Director, um, is there any other sites that weren't mentioned, uh, like uh, flooding sites? I, I know there was uh, some issues on, like, Ashton uh, down that end and towards the Malden culvert. So um, is there any other issues that you're looking at now? other than these ones that you're uh, no at. no uh, these four areas have caught my attention like I say I've only been here seven months mm -hmm. um, I have not had an opportunity to look at these others okay um, when you do is there any way that we could possibly identify them with like a grading system to where you can grade them like a through you know F or something to that effect and then get us a copy of that that's how we used to do it with the streets uh, we would have a grading system on that. And then it's going to depend on the storm that comes. Okay. How many inches of rainfall hit us? And depending on that, there's a possibility of rating one, one to five, one to seven, whatever the case may be. Um, I, can, I can figure something out, perhaps. Okay. Just so, I mean, just so that we have an idea so we're not going into it blind and asking uh, any frivolous questions from you. Uh, I think that when we have a grading system, we understand, yes, A is pretty good here. That's the top of the line. B, C, and then D, F, you know, we can pretty much summarize it from there. Uh, that's how we used to do it with the streeting. I, I think it was, it was pretty effective for us to know what you're looking at. And it's just a, a way that we can actually say, okay, well, these F grades right now, we need to probably take a look at those, you know, and then go forward with that. So it would sort of help us out if you could do that. Um, the other question that I would have is there, I, I've talked to you before in the past uh, uh, about uh, is, there any, is there any clogs or any, and, and you don't have to get specific with this, that it, it, it's either man-made or business-made that we're looking at. It's just a yes or no question that I, I would ask from you from that. So like say if there was a, a clog in a culvert 
and it was man-made or something to that effect. Are we looking into that stuff now? <clears throat> yes. Okay. Thank you very much. That's all you have to say. <laughs> I, I, I described one earlier on, on Tremont. Yeah. Sure. But the, the, is there any other additional that we're looking into now? Uh, no, no. Uh, because we do not have a camera van so okay. we can go investigate things That's what at I a moment's notice, to to. That's what I, want. I need to spend two to $3,000 for every investigation, mm -hmm. um, and that's just a couple of hours. So okay. I'm not going to run up a budget of $20,000 investigating things that may not be a problem. Sure. I'd rather have the camera van, have the crew educated how to use it, and then go tell them, go investigate until all of you are content. Okay. That's what I wanted you to get to. That gives us the reason why you're asking for this camera van and uh, the camera right, system right, and right. also the uh, I'm uh, not asking for this camera van now. I don't believe we have the personnel to operate it, mm -hmm. but perhaps a year or two from now, I think that would be the time to think about uh, purchasing one. Okay. What's the cost on that? 200. 200,000? 200, 200 to 250. 200 to 250. Okay. And how many crew members additional would you need at that point? <clears throat> um, I would like to implement a collection systems crew uh, responsible for the storm drain system of perhaps between four and six. Okay. And I'd like to implement a um, sewer collection systems crew uh, perhaps between four and six. Okay, so an additional now, now eight these to may not be all new employees. I talk of potentially 12 employees. Mm -hmm. These are not necessarily all new employees. But I do think uh, hiring some experienced personnel as crew leaders that know how to uh, diagnose problems, operate camera vans, and so on would be advantageous that we look into. Now, would these people be licensed? As well? Absolutely. Okay, so we wouldn't have to go to outside count, uh, consultants or anything like that to bring them in. To the shut idea off a is valve to do or, more in-house. Okay. Absolutely. And, I agree and with you. I, I have all the experience. I came from uh, another city in this municipality okay. yep. where I was successful implementing a sewer collections crew, uh -huh. camera van, vectors, uh, and so on. Yes. I, I like to do the same here with with you. Absolutely, and I I, I agree wholeheartedly with you, but. What uh, I mean in the future, well, just in the future, if we can get certain individuals licensed, that would be great. That would save be savings to the city. Mm -hmm. Anything that you could do that way, that that's a savings to us because then they're valuable to us. Right. And we wouldn't have to go out to outside counsel or consultant or anything like that to get this. That'd done. be the idea. Okay. Yes. And um, thank you. I'll, I'll talk to you more. It's fine. After about the other uh, issue that I had. Counsel thank you, the Florio. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I know this is an ongoing problem, especially on College Street. I lived on Green Street, right behind there. It's over 40 years. You know, when we were young, we thought it was great. It's like a swimming pool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> my, my question is, you said that the camera uh, truck would be between 200 and 250,000. This That's project is basically about a 10, $15 million project. What, what project? You're saying this whole project? Oh, oh the, the Market Street Culver Market project. Street is Culver, right, yeah. right, 10 okay. 15, right. So my question to you is, as far as the, the camera truck, you said we won't need it for a couple of years. I'd like to see that in the capital improvement plan. I'd like it's, to be proactive. In other words, I'd like to know that in two years, we're going to need this truck and we're going to, you know, that we're going to purchase this truck. There are some loans that we have or bonds that we have that are probably going to be coming off. Maybe it's something that we could consider that we could um, borrow money to do a project, see what's coming off, and see what, how much we can do uh, bonding. There, there will be some bonds that we will pay off. In other words, loans that we will pay off. So the, on the finance end, what I'm saying is maybe we can move on this a little quicker because I know this has been an ongoing uh, issue for years, but it's, we're never going to move on it because it's always the money problem. It's always a money situation. Well, our grandchildren can't pay for this. So right now, let's put the finances together. Let's see what we have to do, and let's see what we have to do to get the money and get it done. Add it all together. It might cost, I'm not saying to go out and, and, and bond 10, 15 million all at once. You may not have to do that. 
you may have to bond three million, two years, two million, five years. So we, we will have other money coming in, but I'm not looking, you know, everybody thinks a win and we're gonna throw this money away. I'm not looking to do that. Either way, whether the wind comes in or doesn't come in or didn't come in, we still have to do this project. This cannot be put on the back burner anymore. We've been talking about this. I've been on the council for 11 years. That's all we talk about, every year. We know it's, it, it's money. We understand taxpayers, you know, at a certain point can't afford it. But the people that are getting flooded all the time can't afford it either. So the insurance companies can't afford to keep paying all this flooding out. So one way or another, we're paying for it. So my point is, let's put, let's put it together, let's do a feasibility study, let's see what it's gonna cost, and let's get on with it. So that's- I, I completely agree with the feasibility study, okay? Whether it's, uh, whether it's a physical document or just our determination of whether we can do it or not. I regret to inform you that a neighboring city owns a camera van, $300,000 and it sits unused because their employees do not know how to operate it. I don't want to get into that situation. I want to be confident that we have the proper people on board that are trained, that can operate this uh, properly, and, and then I would feel comfortable purchasing a camera truck. I understand, but what is your plan to, what, what is your plan to train these employees? When? I would start tomorrow. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> Duly noted, that's fine. I mean, fine. we have to take the first initiative step. So the step that you're saying is we have to train the employees to use this camera truck before we buy it, before we purchase it, is that correct? <sighs> Certainly it makes sense to have a camera truck and train the employees, but I'm still trying to gauge whether our employees can handle such a piece of equipment. Um, it's difficult to train someone to operate a camera van. There's a lot to it. You need a particular type of employee um, to learn this. Perhaps we have to hire this person or a few people. Oh, well we that, might want to look into that. That next question. Then why don't we go out and maybe ask our neighbors if we can borrow their truck, because maybe some of the, the problem is theirs, if we can borrow this truck and bring the people in, bring a couple of people in that do know how to use this camera and then train our employees. Mm -hmm. so Possibility. That, that, I mean, I, I think this is something that we need to move on. Uh, I'm really, you know, that we just can't wait anymore. This is like, you know, if, if, if your pipe in your house is broken and, you just, and it leaks and it leaks and it leaks and you continue to do that, you're going to destroy your home. So eventually, this water is going is, I feel, is going to go nowhere is going to go somewhere where it's really really going to cause a lot of damage in the areas and there's a lot of areas in Everett this isn't just one little area this is a lot right so right. to me I, I would recommend that we do hire someone that knows the camera truck and maybe we can borrow it from our neighbor just a couple of months or whatever until we see what the issue is until we get new um, more employees and then we purchase one figure out a way to do it we have we have to figure it out so but thank you for all your information Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Sola. Okay, a few questions here. Um, the van itself, I know if you got the van for, let's say, $200,000 a couple of years from now, how long do you think you would use this van to solve the problem, and then what happens to the van afterwards if we use it for a year? Well, the <clears throat> purpose of uh, obtaining a camera van is to learn your entire system or systems. Um, so you purchase a camera van and you just tell your crew, go TV inspect and condition code every sewer pipe, every drain pipe. The condition coding system is a, is a coding system from one to five, one being a great pipe, five being a pipe that needs immediate <coughs> attention. Um, what we did in another community was we were required to CCTV, the entire sewer system in a five-year period. Um, during that time, I was receiving in data from the crew on the condition of all their sewer pipes. And I'd be able to sort all those condition codes and pinpoint all the fives and send out a separate crew 
to go fix some of those five pipes. What did that entail? Mm -hmm. It might have been just an offset joint, a spot repair. Um, that's what I would be looking to do. So it's not just buying a camera van to fix the problem. It's buying a camera van to continuously diagnose our entire city over a long period of time to condition code every pipe that we have, both sewer and drain, learn our problem areas, and then prioritize spot repairs, um, lining sections of pipe to eliminate infiltration, and so on. This is what's coming down the pike um, with the new MS4 permit. They want us to eliminate mm. infiltration and inflow. And we can find it easily with this camera van. Um, so it'll serve a number of purposes to, to, to locate problems immediately in an hour or two. And long term, it will help us understand our system in building an asset management program. The next two years, we're saying we're going to wait a year or two to get this van, which I think it should be done now. But what about the smaller camera on the roll with the portable camera that you could buy? I think it's, I could be wrong. Five, Those are $80,000. 80000 And we had one in my uh, other community. And that camera was a starter camera, and it broke quite often, um, costing thousands and thousands of dollars. I would recommend... Um, avoiding the starter camera and going right to a, 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 a full-tiered camera van system that has a uh, Kevlar reinforced mm. uh, cord because on these starter systems they're not Kevlar reinforced and in such a, uh, uh, a hazardous and, and a hostile environment that these pipes are they're all vitrified clay they have sharp edges and when you have a little rubber cord and a bunch of very delicate wires running through that system every day that cord wears out and that cord costs four thousand dollars to repair and on one year in one year i needed to replace three of those cords twelve thousand dollars to just replace a cord um i'd like to avoid that by going right to the full camera van to avoid some of those problems I've seen in the past. Okay, on the culvert, go to the culvert for a second, 10 to 15 million to repair the culvert. You talk about a pump station, that's totally separate, correct? It's totally separate, correct. Uh, I believe two studies have been done. One was to repair, sorry, one was to replace the, ins, the, the culvert in kind, take it out, put a new one right in the same place. The second study was to put a new culvert in right adjacent to it and abandon the old culvert. Those price tags came in between 10 and 15 million dollars. Uh, those two scenarios would continue to bring this tidal activity to the outfall location and we'd continue to have problems in Spring Street unless we updated those tide gates. Um, the pump station takes the tidal um, activity out of the equation, out of the equation. Um, and it allows for a, flee, a free flow all the way, all, all the time, of our drainage water that enters that drainage basin. You say enter, enter, enter from the catch basins or from, and when it, so when it's coming from the catch basins, coming down to the pump, the pump kicks it out into the open Island area. Island and outfall, exactly. Correct. Exactly. What about the, the high tide coming back at it? Yeah. Um, there would be some high tide water that would enter um, that would enter the um, force main. Um, you could potentially put a, um, a, a backflow preventer on that force main, but the pumps would be sized to fully force all the water. If any water came back into that force main, the pump kicked on, the pump would be strong enough to force all that water out. In fact, the pump would likely be sized for a head of water, an elevation of water many feet above the discharge pipe, so that wouldn't be a concern. You know what the cost that pump station would be? No. That's why we want to spend uh, ninety thousand dollars with a consultant to do a preliminary investigation on the soils and ballparking the costs of what it would cost. We get a number, 
8, 9, 10, 12 million, whatever the cost would be. And then we can concentrate on funding it. We can concentrate on approaching stakeholders and learning if they want to participate in, in also funding. There's two more questions. On those um, flood doors, the old ones that have been 60, 70 years old, can we inspect those and do something temporary to keep the water from seeping through it until we decide how we're going to fix all this? Uh, the answer is yes. Um, <clears throat> it might be quite costly. To properly inspect that, you might have to excavate the entire uh, top of that chamber. There's two chambers. I don't know the dimensions, but for, um, for talking purposes, let's say they're 10 by 20. You'd have to take the entire top off that chamber, access those gates, fix those gates, do a temporary fix, place the top back on, and backfill and pave the parking lot that there's now. There's now. That price tag could easily hit a hundred thousand dollars. Well, you're talking here, ten to fifteen million for a culvert, and the cost of a pump station. We don't even know what that's going to be. Correct. So a hundred thousand is a hundred thousand, but it's only a drop in the bucket compared to what you're going to pay for a pump station, a, tr a van, and the culvert. <clears throat> the hundred thousand, if we were to fix those tide gates would likely keep all the flood water out, but at high tide, uh, on the downstream side of those floodgates is an elevation of water that we're not going to be doing anything about. So if it rains, all that storm water still has nowhere to go until those flap gates open oh, yeah. as a yeah. result of the water on the downstream side discharging and uh, decreasing in elevation and then they would work. Right. So an argument could be made that spending 100000 whatever the cost is, for a temporary fix may not serve its purpose. Just the last question was, on that manhole you said you went down and the water level was high, you went to the next catch basin, and it was just trickling through. This is on Tremont Street, yeah. right, right? When did that happen? When did you mm -hmm. notice Tuesday that? morning. Tuesday around 1 p.m. Have we thought of going back there? I'm just throwing ideas out here. I'm no... Uh, expert but to go down and use the vac truck to suck out the manhole that was not as no rain that's a great idea and then go down and see maybe there's a like you said you said it could be a milk cotton it could be stopping that something hopefully be simple but that's least... a great idea i thought of it and our vector truck is down all right i'll stop at that then <laughs> <laughs> there'll be more questions with that so all right all right thank you Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, do you have Lewis Street at the intersection of Paris Street on your list? That's uh, through the parkway. I apologize, Council. I don't know where that is. It's one of the worst flooding areas in the I'm city. I'm writing it down now. I actually live in the neighborhood, and uh, there isn't a home in that neighborhood that doesn't have a sump pump. Okay. Right. That's Got behind it. Richie Slush. You see all oh. the idea? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The little neighborhood, Paris Street, Bailey Street. Yes, 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 yes. Um, as part of our integrated management plan, I believe that neighborhood uh, is one of our 63 projects. Um, we are developing an integrated management plan on a number of stormwater issues and sewer-related issues. That report is going to be completed um, by May of this year. Uh, it will include a list of 60 three projects um, and that is one of them so it is on the list I'm not sure where how high a priority it is well but it that's be, part of it, it's their one of the study. worst uh, do you, you're in contact when the water department for instance my neighbors call the mayor's office and they in turn call the water department and then the truck will come down or some the, the workers will come down lift off the manhole grates and so forth and mm -hmm. poke around, whatever. It, for over the years, there's been a lot of different things happening. But uh, so your office, I know you're new, and you are the city engineer now. No, the director. Director of engineering. Director of engineering. Right. Okay, right. good. Well, I'm glad I brought that to your attention. But um, as I said, there isn't a home in that whole neighborhood. It's a nice neighborhood. Mm -hmm. 
It's industrial. We, you know, we put up with the trucks, sure. the trains, yep. the planes, the pollution, the smells, the noises. It's, a, it's an abused neighborhood, but it's a nice neighborhood, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, Market Forge has just been um, mm. torn down, as you know. Yes. Okay, now that all is in the same area. Mm -hmm. And I understand there might be development. Uh, the mayor did have some meetings uh, last year um, regarding that whole neighborhood. Uh, becoming uh, mixed use condos, whatever it may be. But when they put these new uh, hotels and so forth then isn't, uh, uh, we'll say for instance, three or 400 apartments, we'll say, we'll use that as an example. Mm -hmm. And maybe 20 restaurants and some stores. Aren't they responsible for some of the infrastructure going into the, the pipes, the water, the flow? I mean, you have to I'm enlarge to to service these people, don't you? Uh, you have to enlarge pipes and so forth? You can only take so much. In right. Um, one of the uh, requirements I'm familiar with is when we have new developments, for every one gallon of sewerage you p place into the existing system, you need to take out four gallons of infiltration or inflow in the same system. Okay? So you're not necessarily enlarging the pipes, but you're bettering the situation elsewhere in the system, likely in the same drainage basin, so that when you do tie your 140 apartments to that sewer line, um, you've improved the hydraulic conditions of it. Well, it's that is a requ that is <laughs> You know the business. That's out there. But I mean to say, uh, you know, I see some of these bigger developments for instance, uh, the old Charleston Shoe Building. Yep. Was it 300 apartments? I don't even know, but those pipes had to go into some existing pipeline, no? Uh, well, likely, likely, yes, yes. Most likely, yeah. And you know that, that area there, the spring area, is called the springs because it was a natural water uh, spring in the, you know about that whole issue. Sure, yeah. Is that still there, the, that fresh water ground, whatever they yeah, call it? Yeah, it likely is still there. If we put developments on top of it, it's still there. Potentially can rear its head. Well, it was a good thing years ago. They used to bottle the water. Sure. And okay. sell it. I mean, it was. that's why they call that neighborhood the Springs. And uh, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, a couple of gentlemen came down from the DPW, or the Water Department, yep. I guess. It, yep. That's a different different department altogether now. Division, a, a, a division of the water. DPW. They were very water, professional. Right. They got that big hose that uh, looks like an oil uh, hose that unravels. That's, that's the vector truck that's currently not in operation, right? Oh, thank God it was working that day. Right. Agreed. But these two guys came down, and uh, I, I actually got out with them. My neighbors at all had their sump pumps, and, you know, you're talking heating systems. You know, the mold and the mill do anything you have in your basement. It really gets tainted if you want to use that term but these gentlemen uh, were there for a few hours and they and I went out there and I, I saw pineapples slices of pineapple floating around in the I, I mean how does the stuff end up in the in the water thing and they told me that it was a it was grease that caused this mm -hmm. household grease are we talking here uh, potentially more so industrial grease uh, restaurants and so on that don't have proper grease traps or, or violate their, their, their cleaning requirements for those grease traps. Um, could be a number of things. I've seen a number of things come out of the, the sewer that shouldn't be in the sewer. Well, they did uh, a wonderful job. And the pipe went, for, I don't know if you're not familiar with the neighborhood evidently. All right. I've driven the neighborhood a few times. Oh, good. Yes. Well, the end of Paris Street, the hose went all the way to the parkway. Because they went down to that manhole uh, cover, they took it off. And right, right. They could actually see where the hose was going. You know, this is all new to me now. This is, it's called a jetter, and it's a high-pressure one-inch hose. Right. Uh, 2,000 psi, and uh, which means 2,000 pounds per square inch of water pressure, cleaning that sewer. Oh. Uh -huh. So as that nozzle goes up the pipe, um, the water pressure is for is forcing the nozzle up the pipe. But, but when they draw it back, that's when all the debris, all the grease, all the things hanging up on joints and so on 
get drawn back. And hopefully uh, the manhole they're operating at, they've got a catch basket that all the debris can come into the catch basin or the catch, the catch basket and they simply uh, get the vacuum going and they suck up the problem. I see, yeah. Well, they did a wonderful job. And the other, let's see, I have, uh, well, we went through the market forge area. You know, you know there's going to be a lot of activity there. Mm -hmm. So when it rains in, we'll say, Cottage Street, we'll use that for an sure. example, that water f blew all the way down to the parkway. Now we're hitting the springs. Right. So that whole area is technically, is Lower Broadway considered a, a, a low water line? Area? That, yeah, it's all low water line down there, but that's a separate drainage system from um, the springs. Okay, and we got that covered. And uh, there was one other thing. Uh, well, the cost of this uh, culvert repair. I remember uh, it being on the council agenda over the years, and there was some concern that the, pr the actual pipe and, and some of the uh, infrastructure of this, this nightmare there is in Chelsea. And that Chelsea is, should be responsible for some of the cost, no? Um, it depends upon who you ask. Well, that's, that has to be We would out. love for Chelsea to participate in the repair of this culvert, absolutely. We would love for Chelsea to participate in um, the construction of a, of a pump station and force main. So how do you get them to participate? <laughs> Did I, was this, am I repeating this? Was this brought up earlier? I know I was a minute late, but uh, you got to get them to participate, right? Is that how it works? We we hope to. Because it's, if it is in fact in there, in Chelsea, why should we, is some of their water going in it too? A great question. The 36-inch force main currently goes into the Market Street culvert. For that reason alone, they should participate in its repair. However they are taking the stance they want to take that force main and redirect it to a different location, thus taking their participation completely out of the Market Street culvert. So for that reason, they may try to say, Everett, you're on your own. And they have potentially a lot of development possibilities in the uh the produce area, we'll say. Is that part of that? The pipe goes in that area? The pipe goes right through the produce area, yes. So that's potentially, you know, uh, a reason for them to participate, I would imagine. It could be. Yep, could we could be, make yeah. that argument. Well, I hope that we get a good uh, attorney to actually represent our, the taxpayers of Everett. But I really uh, have to stress to you, uh, Director, that... Uh, the Lower Lewis Paris Street, you know, I'm not chilling for my own neighborhood, but if you don't have that on your list, it should have been there. I know you're new, yep. but uh, we've got uh, some issues. It, it will be in that uh, integrated management plan, which I'll be reviewing a draft of very shortly. And as I said, 63 projects, and that is definitely one of them. Great. Thank you very much. Sure. Okay. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor DePiro. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. O'Rourke, uh, thank you for mentioning Elm Street in that police station area, because I've noticed that that floods quite a bit when it rains. Are you mm -hmm. aware of any issues with Glendale Park that are a result of that? Um, I do believe Elm Street floods as well. It's all tied together as the same trunk main. Mm -hmm. um, the low point is certainly um, the rec center and the police station right in their parking lot. That's what I was asked to drive out to, to witness. When I got there, the flooding had um, dissipated, but I heard stories that Elm Street was flooded as well. It's all part of the same system. Okay. And also, I was going to ask you if you thought about utilizing the current vector truck, but I was unaware it's not working. And uh, it'll, it'll be up and operating soon. They're, they're waiting for some parts to come in. Um, but um, I did pop some manholes along that entire stretch, and I was pleased to see that the pipe is clean. You would use a vac truck to clean a pipe and giving more cross-sectional area by removing uh, rocks, bricks, debris, sand, sediment, 
Uh, I didn't witness any of that. I have reason to believe that it's entirely a clean system. Okay. So the, um, the constrictions in that drainage system are a combination of the bends um, into Chelsea. They've got pipes protruding through the drain pipe. And then Mill Creek, it being a, um, a tidal area. Uh, I haven't witnessed it yet, but I want to go out there at high tide, an extreme high tide, and see the outfall and confirm to myself that, yes, in fact, this is not a free fall outfall at an extreme high tide. The water in the system has to compete against um, the elevation of the, of, the, uh, of the tidal water. And uh, although I'm new to this body, I'm aware this has been an issue for, for a while now. And I agree with what you said. If, you know, once we do hopefully get these issues resolved, we should look at other areas and invest in the equipment and be able to be proactive. Uh, you know, we could rent stuff, as my colleague said, but if it's going to be a long-term a long term investigation of the, the sewer and the pipes throughout the city, I think buying the equipment is the best route. Yep. That's it. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Mangan. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Rourke, um, I just want to touch on what Council Matuski was just talking about. Um, first of all, with, the, ca with the, the, the camera trucks, how far, like, for instance, if you put it in the ground or whatever, how, does it go on forever? Or is it a, a I mean, is it only a certain amount of distance? You're limited to the length of the cord, and you can purchase cords 2,400 feet long. Because the only thing I'm, I'm asking is that, as Council Matuski just brought up, I mean, if this stuff, like he said there was pineapples and things like that down in this area, my thing is that, I don't know, maybe this, there's a lot of stuff on the produce so that the industry is all down in that Dennis Burke and that whole area down there, that this stuff that gets, is getting into the system and it's clogging it up. And I was just wondering if, you know, we could see down that far to see if, you know, that is an issue and they're actually to make our argument better that, you know what, you actually have a lot of produce and you know, whatever, this and that that's getting into the system that's, you know, that's causing all this backup. So I was just wondering if, you know, if the camera would ever be able to get down that far that we could look, you know, down to that area to see if there's stuff getting into the system by way of Chelsea, you know, and causing the problem. <clears throat> Sewer systems have manholes placed every 300 feet in general, sometimes um, a little bit longer, sometimes much shorter. Uh, but with a cord of 2,400 feet, you're going to see everything, everything, grease, produce. Um, it's most advantageous to clean a pipe before you camera it. So you're going to put your jet up the pipe, and you're going to bring it all back, and you're going to suck it out in your vector. And you're going to see it. You're going to hear it coming up through the suction pipe. And you're going to know what it is. Produce, rocks, bricks, broken pipe. You're going to know. Okay. Thank you. Council Capone, starting round two. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A uh, couple of quick questions. The, the wooden gate that, that you talked about, the 6 by 6 where exactly are those located? Um, so if you travel Spring Street all the way down to the tracks, mm -hmm you need to take a right-hand turn into a private driveway. Underneath that private driveway, there's a series of manholes that we popped, and we, f we were able to uh, put a flashlight in the <coughs> manhole and witness these gates. I have pictures. I can share them with you all. Okay, great. And now, the, as you go down 2nd Street, uh, as you're going towards Chelsea, there's the railroad tracks. Is that still Everett, or is that outside? Is that into Chelsea? Do you know? I don't have a map in front of me. I'm sorry. Okay. I, okay. I, I don't know. It's, uh, yeah, off the park where you go down second. You can Right, down. certainly. I know where it yeah. is. I don't um, know. Because I, I, someone had asked if there was actually a gate location I believe that. There. I think that is Everett. I okay. think that is us. I okay. think uh, below that into the market, uh, market terminal, Boston yep. Market Terminal, is where that line takes a hook, and there's more of Chelsea in that, okay. er that location. But I believe those tracks we were referring to on second is Everett. Okay. Do we know if there are gates near those tracks? Because it looks like there's a big outlet pipe there someplace. I don't know if there are gates there or not. You may not know that. I don't know that. Okay. All I know of are the tide gates uh, in um, upstream of the Market Street culvert. Okay. Two tide gates I investigated. Um, I don't have my map in front of me. I have a color-coded storm drainage area of the entire city. Um, I don't know if there's other tide gates um, in these other basins. Okay. In that section, that strip going down second, is that totally independent 
of this other area that we're talking about with the spring It's a great cedar. question. I don't have my map in front of me. I can't say okay. whether it is or not. Okay. Uh, I know that uh, one other thing, you're talking about pipes protruding. Th uh, for Chelsea pipes, you're saying? Were they sewage pipes? Or? I, I don't know what types of pipes. I, I did ask uh, prior consultants that did TV the pipe. I wanted to see the videotape, and they okay. told me they could not locate the videotape. Okay. So we don't know the size of them or... We have no idea. So we have we no idea know, how much percentage is being taken up. We only know from a report. Okay. We only know from a report that okay. there are pipes protruding our storm drain pipe, okay. which is in fact impacting its capacity. Yeah. So we don't even know the percentage of what's being impacted. We, we're not we sure what the We don't know the percentage of cross-sectional yeah, area being be reduced. Right. Twenty-five percent, fifty percent. We, we don't just know. don't know. Okay. Um, and I'm sure that when the time comes to to do this and we're bonding. Uh, that we'll do everything we can to, to look, because it's a huge project, has to be done. Mm -hmm. uh, enormous project. Um, there's gotta be grant money, I would hope, to help out a little bit. We'll pull whoever we can to the table. Uh, I don't know if the MWRA would be available for any of the pieces of equipment that we're looking for, any kind of contribution we might be able to get from them or other agencies in order to try to help defray some of the cost. I'm sure we'll look into all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and the only other thing I'd say, and I know it's not your doing, and I know that a lot of the members have been here for many years. It seems, and in, in I was up here when it was the Common Council a lifetime ago, it seems like there's always been a study, a survey, uh, an engineering report that's been done in this area year after year after year, decades ago. And we sit there and we say, geez, how much money have we spent studying the problem instead of addressing the problem. Uh, I, I have a good sense that we're on top of the problem in that I think collectively the body is at a position where we really need to address it. So I'm glad that we're all on the same page. And uh, anything that we can do, I'll speak for myself, anything we can do uh, from the council level to get this done. I think we need to do it once and for all, stop spending the money on consultants. I know as time goes by, those reports mean nothing. And now we're talking about pumping stations, et cetera. You need to take a look at uh, the condition of the soil and what contaminants you have in there. So yesterday's reports aren't gonna help us. So hopefully we'll, we'll do it right this time and we'll take the bull by the horns, just get it done and, and fix the problem. I think the idea of the camera truck is an excellent one because the system doesn't go away. We need to maintain it as a community. And I think that's a wise investment. So, again, gentlemen, thank you very much for your time and thank you for your information. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Napolitano. <clears throat> thank you. Uh, I meant to ask this when I was up before. Is there any funding available to assist us, MWRA, state, federal? You know, this is a major project at a time where we've got other major projects that, you know, need to be addressed as well. Uh, is there, do we know if there's any, any opportunities to, uh, to get any funding to assist us in getting this work done. That seems to be the one thing that has stopped this from happening. And this is actually a pretty well-informed group as far as this issue goes. Uh, just to make a point, five of the 11 of us have either represented Ward 1 or live in Ward 1. Mm -hmm. So five of us are actually very well knowledge about, about the history of this. The problem is that after 15 years, we're no closer. So. And I'm, I'm glad to hear you're, you're taking a, a, a you know, serious approach on addressing this issue. But are we on our own on this? That's my question. The answer is no. Yeah, we, I mean, we certainly uh, hope not to be on our own, and that's why this process is somewhat a uh, little more methodical than maybe used to. But we will leave no stone unturned to find any assistance we could to make uh, this uh, more economically pleasing to, to the city as a whole. Because the main thing is this issue has been lingering for so long, there's a serious credibility factor out there in the public. And eventually, we, we've got to stop just living with the issue, living with the problem. Sorry. Uh, thank you. That's, that's why I wanted to see if, we, if we're working toward some assistance here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. If there are no, thank you very much. Moving second to uh, Mr. O'Donnell and Mr. O'Rourke, thank you very much. Very informative meeting thank you, tonight. Guys. Thank you, Mr. President. It. Thank you. Uh, you are excused, but thanks. Thank of you, the, of the committee. Um, Council Capone. Mr. Chairman, I would uh, recommend that we refer it out to the, uh, the body to refer back to sponsor. Second. Okay. Motion made and second to refer back to sponsor. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Ayes have it. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All in favor? All opposed, you have adjourned.